What's up everybody, welcome to the channel, I'm Irish Ronan, back with another Top 10. This week I played a little over 200 games from the Low Res Game Jam. The primary limitation of this jam was that the game screen had to be no larger than 64 by 64 pixels. That's a pretty low resolution. Now, here are my four criteria for judging game jams. Number one, fun. If a game ain't fun, what's the point? Two, creativity. I want to see some cool new stuff. Three, easy to learn, hard to master. I have to play a lot of games, I like to jump right in. 4. Polish. Time is tight in a jam. Putting out a well-polished game deserves props. So, let's dive in. Coming in at number 10, we have a game called Funny Land by Pliff. This game is pretty much a straightforward platformer. You jump between platforms, jump on enemies, and collect coins. But the reason this game made the list is because of its execution and the charm it brings. The player controller is tight, the physics are fast, and that means that the game remains challenging despite the relatively simple level design. I also like how the aesthetic of the game changes fairly drastically from level to level, which can feel a bit jarring at times, but experimentation is important and I respect the dev for trying new things. However, my favorite part of the game is the audio. All human voices across the board. Where's the band? Because there's no way you guys are making this magic with just your mouths. Melodies are fun, and it adds a nice, mellow vibe to the game. Anyway, it's a fun game. Give it a go. Number nine on the list is Cyberhack by Ben Barsdell. This was certainly one of the most unique jams of the game. You're trying to hack into a system, which requires finding and entering passcodes, but the moment-to-moment -moment play is maze-solving. The player emits a light, and the only parts of the level that can be seen are those that are within direct line of sight of the player. So solving the levels requires some expl exploration, trial and error, and is facilitated by a very well-executed wraparound screen mechanic. There's also some nice, low-key juiciness, like the little recoil the player has after bumping into a wall. I also enjoy the nostalgia of seeing terms like Leet Ponzor for the first time since the early 2000s, but hey, what can I say? I'm old. I don't have much more to say about this one other than it's a lot of fun and you should absolutely go check it out. Number 8 from the jam is Toybro by Bit Decay Games. This game is essentially a Metroidvania, except unlike most Metroidvanias, there are no weapons. This game is one of many that I couldn't help but feel like was made with a much higher resolution, you know, like fully rendered models, but then passed through some sort of a filter to turn it into a 64 by 64 resolution. Incidentally, if anybody knows how to do that, please leave it in the comments. Anyway, that technique works particularly well in this game as it gives more the impression, no, yes, it gives the impression of a human moving without being concerned about rendering every single detail of that motion. Additionally, the controls and level design are top-notch. You acquire a few abilities as you progress, which allows you to interact with the various platforms and enemies in new and different ways as your character becomes more capable. It takes the standard WASD controls that we all know and love, and tweaks them just enough so that they feel fresh and challenging. This is the very definition of easy to learn, hard to master. I played this game more than almost any other game from the jam. Go try it out. Lucky number seven is a game called Cannons and Crashes by Abamunk. In this game, you're a ship. You have tank controls, two side-mounted cannons, and a dash attack. The visuals make me suspect that this is another down-rendered game because the animation is too smooth. Now, the game the gameplay is fun and quick. The controls take just a little getting used to, but soon enough, you're blowing ships out of the water left and right. There is a very nice crunchiness to the combat, ranging from particle effects and screen shakes to slow motion on your final blast to finish off a mission. I also like the attention to detail in the water, like the ripples trailing from behind the boat and the surface reflections of the on-screen text. Really, the only thing missing from this game is more game. Give it a shot. Next up at number 6 is the game Dual Breach by Playamu. This game would fit very well into an arcade in the 80s. Simple controls, readable pixel art, and a very engaging loop. You're escaping from a cave, blasting any aliens that stand in your way. You've got to switch between orange and blue lasers to destroy orange and blue aliens. 
there are two aspects of this game that make it stand out for me. The first is that it actually feels designed for a 64 by 64 resolution, rather than just a larger game that has a limited view window that's scrunched down so you can barely see anything. The second is how beautifully tuned it is. The opposite of that. The pace is quick and at times frantic. You do have time to think, but you'd better think fast. And if you don't think fast enough, the dev was kind enough to add a feature where the next few rows of enemies are destroyed, thus giving you a second to catch your breath. It's clear that the dev did a serious amount of playtesting. The game is nice and juicy, great AV, and surprisingly diverse and challenging enemy set. You should absolutely give this one a try. Numero Cinco, Carl Goes to Space by Great Borealis. This game is a gem. It's a simple, straightforward platformer that knows what it is. Look, I get that with all the bells and whistles at our disposal, it can be tempting to throw in tons of effects and particles and shaders and everything else. But sometimes, it's good to just get back to basics. Here's mine. It's a hamburger made out of meat on a bun with nothing. The game stands out because of how polished and complete it feels. You complete me. There's nothing mind blowing here. It's just a very well executed, fun little platformer. Go check it out. Just off the podium at number four, we have V by Tailfeather Studios. Once again, we have a simple but well executed platformer. This one, however, has an interesting wrinkle. In the same way that Celeste was a pixel art game, and there was a Pico version of essentially the same game, V is sort of the Pico version of V V V V V V V. Is that six? Might have been seven. Doesn't matter. The basic premise here is to collect trinkets by traversing the levels, flipping gravity as needed. I especially like the visual style here. The entire game is an exercise in minimalism. Just enough detail to ensure that the player knows what's going on, but no more. As for the music, what can I say? It slaps. It's a pretty quick playthrough and very enjoyable. Give it a shot. In third place is Last Minute by Slain Mascot. Here's what the dev wrote about this game. A robot is terrorizing the town, your homework is scattered about, coffee is in limited supply, and you have only 60 seconds to make it to school on time. Do you have what it takes? As it turns out, no. No, I don't. The game is incredibly challenging, but also extremely fun. It requires many playthroughs to actually get a good score, which doesn't take long because each playthrough is only a few seconds. You sprint through the levels trying to pick up coffee and homework while dodging everything from cracks in the sidewalk to giant fireballs being hurled by invading robots. The game is pure insanity. Here's Johnny. But it's also extremely well built and addictive. This is the game that I spent the most time playing from the jam. I couldn't stop trying to improve my runs in the pursuit of the perfect lap. No mistakes. Needless to say, I didn't achieve it. But that doesn't mean that you can't. So go try for yourself. Second place on the silver medal go to Infinite Tree Pinball by Jeremy Bowen. This game was very interesting. It's not the cleanest from the jam, but it's surely one of the most unique. I think the best possible way to describe it would be a pinball maze adventure. It's essentially a massive pinball machine with flippers all over the place and a directional tilt function that lets you blast through walls with the arrow keys. The physics are very enjoyable, the ball has a nice mass to it, the music is great, the enemies are fun to destroy, there are secret areas to find. I was blown away at how much game was in this game. It's incredible how much content the dev was able to create in such a limited time frame. Additionally, the game is something of a puzzle platformer as well, so take that for what it's worth. I'm honestly having a hard time trying to list all of the unique and interesting aspects of this game. What can I tell you? It's well worth checking out, and you should. No top 10 list would be complete without at least one honorable mention. This time, it's From Above by Stab Alarash. This is a top-down shooter a la Galaga. 
simply put, it's a well-made shooter that is surprisingly deep for a game jam game, including a full upgrade system and shop, as well as a node-based game path. The only reason it didn't place in the top 10 is there's a pretty uniform enemy behavior throughout the game. Variety's the spice of life, my friend. Spice it up. That's a spicy meatball. Nonetheless, it's a fast-paced game that you should absolutely try. And the big winner, gold medal number one, is Occult Runner by No. This game is an absolute blast. You are a robot created by a wizard fighting off waves of enemies trying to attack your bunker. The gameplay is as fast-paced as you want it to be, depending on how aggressive you're going to be with the enemies. You have two attack modes, ground and air, and in either, you can just spray projectiles all over the place like Schwarzenegger in Prime. You can also pick up a huge amount of speed by shooting across the level, slam into enemies and destroy them that way. In addition to the fun factor, which is intense, the juiciness factor is, well, it's over 9,000! Everything from screen shakes to impact noises to flashing point counters to recoil from your shots and on and on and on. The dev clearly appreciates the value of giving the player feedback to suck you into the game. It's pure chaos and I loved absolutely every second of it. Go see for yourself. And that'll do it from the top 10 for the low res game jam. If your game didn't make the list, that can only be for one of three reasons. I didn't have time to play it, it wasn't my cup of tea, or it was only downloadable as a .rar file, in which case... Why? 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 Links to the games from this video and to the submission page from the jam are in the description. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you really like this video, hit subscribe. You know where it is. It's right there. Click it. Come on, just click it. It feels good. If you didn't like the video, I appreciate you hanging in there. And let me just say, you're the best. I love you. You're amazing. And maybe you should watch the video again, just to be sure. Until next time, thanks for watching. This is Irish Ronan, reminding you of the most important game loop in life. Do, fail, learn, repeat. See ya.